Hello everyone and welcome to the Stylized Fantasy Village Content Pack Demo. The Spawner Pack contains ready-made configurations to spawn the assets found in the Suntail Fantasy Village Pack. To use the Spawner Pack, you will need the Suntail Fantasy Village Pack along with one or both of Gaia and Gina. You can get Gaia and Gina on the Unity Asset Store or as part of your Canopy Pro subscription. To get started here, we're going to begin by uh, creating a terrain using Gaia. Uh, along with Gina, and then we're going to create a train using just Gaia and one with Gina to show what you'll get with uh, the combination of the two assets and just the single one of each. So let's get started here. So we're going to navigate to the Gaia Manager using Window Procedural Worlds Gaia Manager, and then we are going to create a new world, and set our target biome to be stylized village, and set our workflow to be manual with stamper. Now that it's created the basis of our world, I'm going to stamp out a very simple stamp, and then update my runtime in the Gaia Manager. Okay, let's look at the stylized village biome in its entirety. We can see we have nine different spawners, four of which used Gina spawn extensions, and five of which are just straight Gaia. We have the large village spawner, which, um, as the name suggests, spawns uh, two different types of um, Gina large villages. We have the small village spawner, which spawns two different types of Gina small, small villages. We have the lone house spawner, which uh, scattered around our terrain will spawn houses that um, are more isolated that have eight different subsets, each of which have 400,000 different exterior permutations. And we have the stylized village camp zone, which adds some more um, uh, nature-oriented infrastructure to our world. And then, as you can see, we have all the stylized village textures, which um, is just a typical texture spawner, and the rest of these are very typical um, we have rocks, trees, and for the trees we've applied a slight noise map so that we have some fields and some more densely forested areas. Um, we have the grass and of course our bushes as well. There's one thing that should be mentioned about the spawner, and that is that when you have spawned things on your terrain with the genus spawn extensions here, they will texture your terrain. And obviously we don't want our texture spawner overriding normally those textures that have been placed. It's for this reason that we have the mud eraser. So when you're removing those villages from your terrain, uh, let's say you're resetting your terrain, you need to enable the mud eraser and then it'll allow this texture spawner to overwrite all of those special textures that the Gina extensions spawn. Now, uh, and let's spawn this biome and we can take a look at what it's like. All right. So it has spawned, and now let's take a look at some of what we've got here. You can see that we have a couple large villages that have spawned. Um, and because this terrain is so flat, we're getting them pretty densely packed. Most of the large villages are comprised of around eight buildings. And you can see that reflected in uh, these two. These are two subsets. We have the one with the river, and that's sort of more wavy, and it's got all these uh, supply piles, and it's um, a very organized town center there. And then we've got one that's more like uh, a road town. And uh, this one um, has is designed to fit into all your road systems and um, connect to those very well. You can also see with some of the small villages here that they're also designed to connect in a similar way to connect to your road systems. The one, one type is designed to be on the end of a road or on a like a dead end. And then another type, which I think we can find if we go up here. Let's see. Ah, yes, over here. The other type is designed to fit right over a road that you've created. And then as you can see, we've got these lone houses just scattered around everywhere. And let's take a look and see if we can find any 
uh, camp camps that we have. So if we go to genus spawns, campground, and yeah, we have three campgrounds. And you can see we have just a wagon and a campfire there and a few supply piles to round out that little campfire. So that is what a terrain created with both Gaia and Gina can look like with this pack. Super, super nice stuff that it's done. Uh, we've got these lovely little rivers. We've got these towns that are enabled with Gina and everything has uh, come together really well. A lot of uh, buildings, obviously, and a really nice blend between texture and building. So now let's uh, remove these from the terrain, and we can do that by going to Stylized Village Biome, Clear Spawns, Clear Spawns Now, and then if we go to Textures and enable our Mud Eraser, we can head to the Session Manager and restore one of our height map backups that it will have taken before spawning um, the, the uh, biome. And then tick on our Mud Eraser and spawn local. And there we go, our trains are back to normal. And make sure to tick off Mud Eraser afterwards. So now we're going to spawn the biome as if we didn't have access to Gina. So we're going to get none of these and all of the textures. So let's tick these off and spawn biome. Now you can see we have a really, really nice, uh, more nature-oriented biome. We obviously have some, some open fields with the rocks, and then we have some more forested areas here that uh, your player can um, switch between. And it's super easy for you to increase or decrease the intensity of your trees in the scene by simply coming to the noise mask and changing the oscillation and the strength so for now, we can go to um, the noise type settings and increase the amplitude of the noise so that we get more spawns on terrain. And now if we go back, close this and spawn, you can see we'll get a lot more trees. And there we go. As expected, we have far more trees on our terrain, probably too many for the typical game. And so you'll begin to run into performance issues with this many. Um, but way more nonetheless. All right. So now let's take a look after clearing everything from this at what you can do by only using Gina on your terrain. So we have your texture terrain here and you can come and go to Procedural Worlds Content Packs Reggie's Stylized Fantasy Village, and then you go to your Gina Spawners. So we have three different main subsets of Gina Spawners in this pack. We have the Villages, the Nature, and the Houses Spawners. So let's start off with Villages because they are sort of the foundational aspect, or, or the first aspect of your scene. As you can see, we have three or four different kinds of Villages too large and too small. And as I went over a little bit in the uh, initial Gaia spawn, um, spawning of the biome, all of these villages have a certain purpose in terms of road networks. This one is designed to be on a dead end or a branch. And this one is designed to be part of a road ne network going straight over it. The same is true for Small Village 1, designed to be on a dead end, and Small Village 2 is designed to go straight on a road. Let's create a little tiny example road network using what we just done. So for instance, we can spawn a large Village 1 to start the network off, and you can hold Shift and drag to determine the direction you To start the village off, and then perhaps we can have a small village 2 leading off that, and then a large village 2 
um, perhaps here. And in the middle of those two villages, or on the end of this one, and on the end of this one, rather, I will spawn, oh, my apologies there, I spawned the wrong thing. I will spawn a small village to there, and a small village to here. All right, now we're going to go into our terrain, select the paint tool, and go to the path texture that in the pack. With this path texture, we're going to decrease the size so it matches up with what we've already created. A little bit smaller, I think. Perhaps nine. Yeah, that looks good. We're going to turn off gizmos so that we don't have all that clutter on our screen. And now we're simply going to paint our trail to connect all of these little pieces that we have. Another thing you can do with the Gina pack is instead of using paths to manually connect your terrain, your villages, you can use the intersection. So let's erase these paths that we've created. And we're going to go to miscellaneous and we're going to drag in the well intersection spawner. This spawner is really, really useful because it allows you to create like really visually pleasing uh, intersections for your village's world networks. Right there. And you can see we have some market stalls at this well on the corners, and we have uh, a nice little well in the center there. So this provides an even better basis for um, the connections between your roads. So now we can perhaps Go to our Gaia Terrains. Go to our Tile Spawner. Reduce its size to 8. Turn off Gizmos to get all that clutter off the screen. And then simply connect these up. And uh, now that we have this four way, we can also just simply make another small village one right here and connect that up as well or of course you could create a large village one turn off gizmos again and connect it up all right so as you can see we've created a nice little road network throughout our, our uh, little world here and uh, that's sort of how you can use the village and well intersection spawners to make a well, um, varied world. But now I'm going to show you sort of uh, some of the more nature oriented spawners. So we've got the bush cluster, the large forest, the small forest, and the stone cluster. So let's start with the large forest. We're going to spawn it just around the perimeter of our um, buildings here so we don't get many problems. All right, I'm done spawning our large forest around, and now we're going to spawn the small forest in some of these spots where we just want a little bit more precision. And then to add a little bit of realism to our environment, we're going to add a bush cluster here and there around our road. around our village. And also I seem to have neglected this area with trees. So we're going to leave that hill mostly exposed so that we have a little field. But most of this is going to stay nicely. All right, now stone clusters. Okay, there we go. Well, that's what nature spawners we have in the pack. As you can see, we have these really, really nice forests around our paths now. And once we spawn the grass on our terrain, this will all look very, very nice.
Let's go back up to the top view here and explore some of our more miscellaneous spawners. And I'm going to drag in all our miscellaneous spawners here. So we have the campground, which was mentioned earlier, which basically just spawns some crates, some wagons, uh, fire, and then these barrels around, uh, around it. We have the very simple food crate spawner, which will just save you some time randomizing and snapping to ground and conform to slope your food crates. So you can see there, we have the market stall. This is one of my favorites. This just uh, creates a really nice randomized market stall on your terrain. It has a little bench, the carpet, the seat, and a randomized crew food crate here, and occasionally some bags there. And all of it is pretty randomized. So if you see, uh, spot some more here. We've got the supplies pile prop, which is sort of like the food crate, but it's just for a, a wider array of things. So we've got a barrel with a tool leaning up against it. We've got little barrel spawns on all of this stuff and a bag as well. We've got a wagon, which is again, very similar to that. So it'll just randomize what's on the inside of these wagons and snap them to the slope, um, just to save you some time with um, spawning all these props everywhere. And then the well intersection, which you've already seen, which, uh, Looks a bit like that. It spawns, spawns markets all around it. Okay, now let's get into the houses. This is probably one of the most important parts of the pack that you're going to be using. So all of these houses uh, have very different structural layouts, but it's their exteriors that are randomized, not their structures. If you want to randomize the structural layout between the eight, then you're going to have to go to the Lone House Spawner, which randomizes that as well. So as you can see, Every time we'll get a different house, a different exterior, and uh, yeah, another few million different combinations in there as well. Let me go through all of the different kinds of houses you have. So uh, I'll just delete these for now. So we have house one, which you can see here. House two, which is a similar layout, uh, but it has the little L, or I suppose you could call it a T. As you can see, structural differences along with exterior extreme differences. Now, that concludes what you can achieve with the stylized village content pack. Obviously, we didn't go into the full level of complexity that you can really get into with all the genus spawners in this pack, but you can really create some gorgeous worlds and environments extremely quickly. The video you're seeing right now has been created from our little Gina environment that we made at the end of the video. I hope this video helped, and I hope you guys enjoy the pack. See ya.